morning. And I'm going to talk from the, this thought this morning. What is your name? And what are you called? What, are, what is your name? And what are you called? And we get this, we lift this from the scripture, Genesis, the 35th chapter, beginning at the 10th verse, and it reads. And God said unto him, Thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel. God changes the patriarch Jacob's name to Israel. We also when we are saved, the Bible speaks in the book of Revelation that we all are given names that only Christ himself knows. Then will be revealed to us at that time. Now, many times we've seen in the New Covenant and in the Old Covenant where God has changed the names of his people. We saw it with Cephas. His name was changed to Peter. We saw it was with Saul. His name was changed to Paul. Abram to Abraham, Sarai to Sarah, so forth and so on. But he asked Jacob a question in that previous verse, in that ninth verse, and he asked him, what is your name? He told him that Jacob. So God said, yes, your name is Jacob, but now you won't be called that anymore. You're going to be called Israel. Because it was on the night before that Jacob wrestled with God and prevailed. Keep this in mind because we're going further into the patriarch story. For well, the Bible says in the 11th verse. And God said unto him, I am God Almighty, be fruitful and multiply. Mm -hmm. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee, and kings shall come out of thy own. Now keep in mind now, he's placing a blessing of fruitfulness and multiplication, which deal with fruitfulness coming from and down through his generation. Now, he's not blessing him personally, to have children again because he's had all the children that he's going to have. Right. But he's passing the, bl the blessing on unto his seed. And he says, out of you will come nations and there will come uh, uh, a company of nations and kings out of your loins. So it's from those that have already been born of him. Read what he says in Genesis 35 and 12. And the land which I gave Abraham and Isaac to mm -hmm. thee will I give it. And to thy seed after thee so then he's telling them, not only will you get the land, but you'll be fruitful, you'll be multiplying. You'll be as the sand, the Bible says, as the stars in the sky, and as the sands of the seashore. What a blessing. Now, now think about this for one minute. The first blessing was upon Abraham. Abraham only had the one son of promise, Isaac. Isaac only had two sons, Esau and Jacob. Well, if I'm going to have children like the stars, and I'm getting them one and two at a time, it's going to take a minute. Y'all not in here with me. So God speaks a blessing upon Jacob because Jacob has 12. All right. And all 12 of his children are going to be fruitful and multiply. But watch what the Bible says in the 27th verse. Because the devil will always get into business when God gives you a promise. And Genesis 35 and 22. And it came to pass when Israel dwelt in that land that Reuben went and lay with Bilhah, his father's concubine, and Israel hurried. Now that's perverted. God had just blessed his sons, Jacob's sons, to be fruitful and multiply. But he didn't tell them to do it outside of the right way to do it. A son does not go unto his father's wife. Anybody here with me? Children that should not be laying down with their parents, grandparents. And right after the blessing was spoken, here goes Reuben. He's the oldest child. He knows better, heaven only knows. But he didn't do better. So we see a perverseness that's being established in this family. Well, let's keep reading. Let's keep reading because I'm, I'm going to ask you a question in a minute. I want to know what, your, what is your name. Well, I want to know what you're being called. And, and what you're being called is going to have a direct relationship on what you're doing. Oh, I'm not in here with you. So the Bible says in Genesis 37 and 2, what does it say? These are the generations of Jacob. 
Joseph being 17 years old, was feeding the flock of his brethren, and the lad was with the sons of Bilhah, and was the son of Zephah, his, his father's wife, and Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Joseph was their supervisor. He was their <coughs> leadership. And the evil report, the Bible does not tell us what it was he reported on the brother. But evidently the brothers did something they were not supposed to do. And because he was the lead shepherd, he went and told his father. Right. He was not being a tattletale. It was his responsibility to report to Jacob, to Israel, right. the doings and dealings, how his sons were dealing with the herds, with the flocks. So the Bible said he reported their evil report. And the fourth verse says, and when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, mm -hmm. they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. Between Jacob giving his son Joseph this coat of many colors, it marked him as saying that the father had favor with him. It marked him to say that out of all of my children, my 11 sons, I favor this one more. All right. They hated him for that. But then they hated him because he told it all. all right. Then they hated him because he had dreams. And he told them his dreams. So then the Bible says in Genesis 38 and 2. And Judah saw there a daughter of a certain Canaanite whose name was Shua, mm -hmm. and he took her and went in unto her. The Bible switches gears on us and is talking about Joseph and how his brothers hated him. And you all know the story. That's why they put it all in there, how they threw him in a pit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. They decided it was no profit or money to be made by just letting him die in the pit. They decided to sell him and they sold him. Right in the midst of them selling him, the ones he sold them to, sold him again. Right. To Potiphar, right. into Egypt. Right. And while Joseph is in Egypt, because I'm not going to tell that part of the story this morning. Right. If you don't know that part, you need to go read that part. Right. All right. All right. right after this story of Joseph being sold and going down to Potiphar, the Bible goes into this 38 verse talking about Judah. And it talks about him finding a Canaanite woman and marrying her. The story does not continue with Joseph. It starts with Joseph. You go look at that in the Bible and see what I'm talking about. When you get to that 35th verse, and you read that 30, I mean 37, excuse me, 30, uh, 5th chapter and 36th chapter. It jumps from talking about Joseph, and then right in the middle, it starts in that 37th chapter talking about Judah. And the reason being, now watch this now. When the brothers decided we're going to kill Joseph, it was Reuben, the oldest son, they said, now, let's don't kill him. He's the flesh of, uh, of our flesh and he's our brethren. We shouldn't kill him. He was the one that, that said, let's throw him in a pit. And the Bible said he said that because he was going to go back to the father, then come back and steal Joseph back because he didn't want his brother killed. But when he came back, the brothers had already conspired and y'all not in the room, and put blood on Joseph's coat of many colors. Even Reuben didn't know the boy was dead. All right. Right. Him. They had sold the boy for 20 pieces of silver. Y'all watch this now. Benjamin wasn't with them because he was the youngest. His mother, Rachel, had died giving birth. Joseph was the one in the hole. Reuben was gone to the father. Y'all in here. That left nine children. Whoever was the oldest one in that bunch left while Reuben was gone off. He got two pieces. Yeah. All right. More than the rest. Yeah. Well, I've already done the math, so I'll tell you what it was. If there's 20 pieces of silver, yeah. and there's nine men, and the one that the oldest had to get twice as much as the other one, that means that eight of them had two pieces of piece, yeah. but one of them had four. Come out of here with me. They cheated Reuben out of the money, although he was in cahoots with him. All right. Oh, see, I can preach right there. A lot of times people, oh, I'm trying to stay out of my message this afternoon, but I'm going to dip off into it just a little bit. There are some folks that's associated with you just because they're not with you. They're not even for you. They're just against what you're against. When folks sometimes will join with you, you thought they were for you, but they were not for 
for you. They were just against what you was against. And then when that problem goes away, then you wonder why they slip off from you now. See, they weren't with you in the first place. They weren't there for you. They were not there for what you were for. They were there for what you was against. Y'all stay on that Now I gotta step back out of that message. I but I gotta stay with this. Y'all have to understand something. Judah saw a woman that was a Canaanite, and he took her, married her, and he had three children. Three sons. Watch what the Bible says about these sons. In Genesis 37, the father 38 and 6. And Judah took a wife for Eric, his firstborn, whose name was Tamar. Mm -hmm. And Eric, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord. He was so crooked that what did God do? God killed, God killed Judah's oldest son. He was that wicked. Crooked. That's what it means. He was crooked. Y'all said crooked. Aren't we glad God doesn't kill us just because we're crooked? Amen. 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 But there is a New Testament scripture where some folks stood in front of the preacher, the man of God, and lied to them about money. Y'all know the Bible story. Ananias and Sapphira, they had agreed that they were going to give a certain amount of money to the church from the sale of that land. And when they got the money from the sale of the land, it was so much that they decided we're going to hold back part of it. And the Bible said while the husband was lying to Peter, the Bible said he fell dead. And the wife come up later, didn't know her husband had been buried. They, they, the guy, the young man went ahead and buried her, buried him. And the Bible says she's standing up there and Peter said, did you sell the money for such and such, I mean the land for such and such a price? He said, she said, yes sir. The Bible says she dropped dead. She moved about. Peter said, the feet of them that took your husband off. They are coming for you. That was your little Bible. And that's when she dropped there. So I'm, I'm trying to tell you, this boy was so crooked. God killed him. Amen. But read what the next verse said. And Judah said to Onan, Go in to thy brother's wife and marry her and raise up seed to thy brother. Yeah, because the law was in that day, in that culture, in that country, in, in, that, in, that, uh, in, in the Hebrew, in the Jewish the family was that if you had a brother that was available, that brother then would marry the wife of his deceased Amen. brother and raise up seed. Those children would go in that other brother's dead name. Amen. See, this one's going to be Onan Jr. Amen. This is going to be Er Jr. Y'all not in here with me. Er was the one that died. He was going to have to raise up that child and give him that, that dead brother's name. Amen. And since that boy, boy Er was the oldest, he was going to have to get double portion. But Onan didn't want to give up the stuff. Okay. Well, read what the Bible says. And Onan knew that the seed should not be here. Yeah, he knew that the seed, he knew that the inheritance would pass to this next child, even though it would come from his body, it would have his brother's name. All right. And what happened? And it came to pass, when he went in unto his brother's wife, uh -huh. that he spilled it on the ground. He went in unto her mm -hmm. on the honeymoon night. Y'all in here with me? Uh -huh. But he withdrew himself and spilled his seed upon the ground. Y'all read what I'm reading? Amen. He spilled it on the ground because he didn't want to raise up children in his brother's name until the inheritance so he get the double portion. And he spilled his seed on the ground and what happened? Least that he should give seed to his brother. Uh huh. And the thing which he did displeased the Lord. Wherefore, he slew. And God killed him too. Yeah. All right.